All right, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make an exploding coin bank. Um, the base of an exploding coin bank is the mouse trap. Uh, this mouse trap actually, for me, looks a little bit unusual. Uh, normally, I've seen ones with a little metal piece here, but this one actually is a little bit different. But pretty much any mouse trap, I think, should do. Um, the most important point is that you have to have some kind of bar that swings because that's the bar that's going to throw the whole uh, trap apart. Alright, so like I said, the base of the whole thing is really the mouse trap. That's what's going to determine the size of basically all your components. So you're going to need to make a floor. That's where I begin putting my trap on the floor. But with this one, it has this uh, this little metal bar here at the bottom. I wonder if I really need that. Maybe I can just take it out. I'm actually just gonna pull this out. I don't think that will hurt anything to have that out. I do wanna be a bit careful here because this wood is super soft and cheap, so I don't wanna accidentally break anything. Got that piece out. So now you gotta figure out how big do you need to cut the floor. So what actually you need to do is, um, because these type of houses or whatever you want to call it, the outhouse, if you can see that, is actually just going to be fitted together, it's going to need some kind of sides, otherwise it'll just fall apart before you even put a coin in it. So basically this, is, this whole house is just going to be kind of fitted together. Um, so you need enough space that the walls can just sit in there and have a little bit of wiggle room because you don't want it to be too stiff. You want also what you want when the also when the mouse trap does um, go off you want it to actually be able to uh, throw the walls off. You don't want them to be so snug that it can't uh, can't do that. So I'm going to use this is kind of my outline for the house. Um, kind of hard to explain but you know, in order to keep the walls in there, you have to have some kind of side to hold them up and leave the right space. And then I can just put the wall in. So, in reality, I'm not even sure if I have to do any measuring here. I can probably just uh, use a pencil and mark where I need. I mean, this whole thing, believe it or not, shouldn't need that much precision. That looks pretty good. So I'm actually just gonna measure the distance here roughly or 12 point yeah, let's say 12 12 millimeters measure this and add 12 millimeters to each side and then cut that out and that should be my base all right so what you gotta do is say this is 47 plus 12 plus 12 67 that would be 71 all right so it should be 71 wide Go ahead and measure that off. 71. Doesn't matter if it's a tiny bit big, you can always sand it down, especially this, this type of wood, it's super soft. All right, and that should be our base. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that out. There's our base. Now just uh, measure out about 12 millimeters on each side. I first saw one of these when I was a little kid. I don't even know how old, maybe 10 years old or something. My grandfather had made one. He's a really good craftsman and uh, I was really impressed by it. I remember I played with it quite a bit, resetting the trap and making the house blow up again and again. And really enjoyed it when I was a little boy. So. Uh, yeah, and just like, I don't know what, I don't actually have no idea when it came to my mind, but for some reason I thought, hey, I want to go ahead and recreate that. Let me turn it so I can show you. See quite a bit of room there. That's good. Yeah, that looks really good actually. Cool. Alright, so, so what I've done here is uh, set my base up, measure 12 millimeters from each edge, and then I'm just going to 
Well, I think I'm not going to glue this down quite yet. I'm going to do the uh, perimeter pieces first, which I'll use this. I'm probably going to have to cut some more. That's okay. And I'm just going to use the, uh, the width of this material as, as the width that I need, because I already planned to do that at the beginning. And the hike, I'll just use whatever this scrap happens to be. Looks like a decent height. It's a little bit higher than the trap itself, but not too much. So that should be fine. Ah, it's 10 millimeters. All right, so I need 10 millimeter hike. I'll go ahead and just uh, mark that. Okay, so now I'm gonna, now that the outside little walls are somewhat dry, I'm gonna try to glue in my mouse trap to the bottom. So I'm just gonna set that down as best I can, kind of following those lines that I made earlier. And then I'm gonna take this piece here, which is the same as the wall, and I'm gonna kind of use that as a spacer. It's pretty darn loose. Maybe I made it too loose even. I mean, it'll work in any, in any way. That's really loose. The front and back are a little bit more snug. But they're actually more ideal, probably. So now that I have it glued down, I'm just going to let it dry. Uh, meantime, I guess I can start working on the walls. One thing to think about now is do I want the grain going horizontal or vertical? Uh, I think... I think I'm going to go for vertical, because when I paint it, I might try to make uh, vertical kind of slats. So I think I'm going to go vertical with the grain. So now I need to think about what size I need and what shape. So I need to figure out how tall I want it to be. And usually this, uh, this type of bank will have a, a angled roof. So it'll be kind of like that or something. None of that really matters. I mean, you could even make it perfectly square if you wanted. But I think I'll try to stick with the, the tradition and uh, make it angled. So, uh, looks like it's a little bit under 150 millimeters. So, yeah, you can roughly round it up to 15 centimeters tall. So maybe I will use that as the maximum height just that 15 centimeters really doesn't matter at all so I'm gonna go ahead and cut that on my bandsaw and then I'll trace it onto the next one and do the same for that one okay and so now I've cut my uh, angles just random angles the important part is that they're pretty much the same height I think I did pretty good on that. You know, I just used the uh, table saw. And then after I was finished, just to make sure it was totally flat, I just used my uh, block sander. And... All right, so things are getting messy on the desk. I kind of cleaned everything up here. What we have is our two end pieces, which go here and here, our two wall pieces which go there and there. Okay, now we're starting to get pretty close to being finished. I have the, as you can see, the, uh, the four walls finished. Now I just need to do the roof. And actually the length that the stock came with was fine, so the length is good. I just need to cut it a little bit, um, a little bit narrower. As you can see, it's a bit too wide. So I already marked a place right there. I'm just gonna go to the bandsaw and cut that. And uh, then I just need to make some uh, holding pieces to kind of hold the walls in place when the roof is on. But I just noticed a little problem. I think it'll be easy to fix though. And that is 
this mouse trap doesn't work anymore. As you can see, I cannot set the trap. And the reason why is because now that that wire piece that I took off earlier isn't there anymore, the trap doesn't, the bottom of the trap doesn't have any space to allow this trigger to rotate on the bottom side. So this trigger can't come up as much as it should. And as a result, uh, it can't hook the, the thing. I think that's going to be very easy to fix. Now it's bent quite a bit from where it started. Alright, so I made the uh, roof now. Uh, this is what I was talking about with the little squares. I'll just glue them down wherever they need to be. Now I just need to figure out where they weren't going to go here. Um, like I said, it needs to be about the size of this, length of this. So I'm going to go ahead and let that dry a little bit, and then uh, I'll probably put this thing together and try it out. Oh, one more thing I need to do, and I can do that now while that's drying. Very important thing, actually, one of the most important things in the whole project. When this trap um, releases its energy, it needs something to pick up on. So I need to glue some kind of peg or something there so it will lift up and throw these walls off when, it, when it's released. So what I'm going to do is, and I, and I don't know, I've never like, even when I made this, I didn't read any directions. I did type into uh, DuckDuckGo image. I think I wrote outhouse coin bank or something like that, or exploding coin bank, just to kind of get some pictures in my head what it looks like, because I haven't seen this thing. I haven't seen one of these in like, who knows how long, since I was a little boy. Um, I don't think anyway. So I didn't really remember how it works exactly. I just kind of looked at some photos. But, and so anyway, what I'm trying to say is I don't really know where the optimal placement of this pin is, but I imagine it shouldn't be too low. But on the other hand, I don't definitely don't want it too high because then it's just going to throw it that way. I want it to really lift up. So I'm going to try just kind of randomly right here. All right, so probably this is little nub I made is dry, dry enough. So I'm going to go ahead and glue it onto the uh, wall. Okay, so what I'm going to do here and what these four pieces are for is to really hold those walls in. So when they are fixed, you know, right here and right here, these little pieces here will help keep everything really sturdy. Okay, I think that's going to do it. Go ahead and just let that dry now. Okay, one thing I kind of forgot about is to make the the coin slot, of course, and as you can see this is that pad I kind of this guidance pad I made. Um, that's where the coin slot needs to be. So I just kind of roughly sketched out a slot. Oh yeah, that's pretty bad. Got a lot of chip out there. I would say, in fact, that was a mistake. Shouldn't have done that. The only thing I might be able to get away with fixing it is if I can get some uh, wood putty and fill that in. I plan to paint the whole thing anyway, so maybe it'll be okay. I may have to make this whole lid again, unfortunately. <laughs> Je m'appelle Luca, euh, j'ai un Lions Room en Alsace en France et je vais vous montrer la plus débile vidéo. La tirelire piégée. 3, 2, 1. <rire>